Hello, my name is Ralph Friedrichs. I am an addiction recovery coach and a host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to share this with you. and Let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive, but you know you're not dead. You don't know how to open the coffin and push the enormous weight of the dirt that's above the lid. You think about giving up and waiting for death to arrive, but you also think about banging on the lid so maybe you can unsettle the dirt and maybe, just maybe someone on top might notice and start digging their way down to help you. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help, you know you can't do it completely on your own, but you don't know which way, uh, which way to turn for help. In reality, there are probably people standing by your grave, but you don't know that. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, people don't think about death when they're habitually abusing drugs and alcohol. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be good at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, did it ever cross your mind that you might just overdose from all that drug and alcohol abuse and take something so precious away from yourself, a gift from God, your life, and then also take your life away from your children, your husband, your wife? Excuse me. <coughs> With this, I leave you one other thought. Don't be that person banging on the coffin, hoping that someone might come and help. Instead of being a be the person that takes action today by calling me at 844-405-HELP or texting me at 631-599-0218, let me help you take your life back, folks, before your life is gone. Another person you can turn to is Larry Geis from the Geis Academy. You can find him at 516-458-2741. Larry Geis is an addiction recovery coach, a life coach. He will also help you go from your addiction to your recovery. He and I always tell our clients, we never, ever worry about what you've gone through or your past or hold that against you. We always say it doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what you've been through. I mean... Whatever you've been through hopefully was a, uh, a solid foundation for you to build on today. But so many people come to us and they say, well, look at my past. And I'm telling you right now, Larry will be the first to tell you it doesn't matter where you came from. What matters is that you took the first step and you're here today, now, looking for help, asking for help, crying for help. Larry Geis, 516-458-2741. You can Google him at www www.odysseyconsultant.org www.odysseyconsultant.org Let Larry Geis help you go from your addiction to your recovery from your low self-esteem to improve your self-esteem from your depression to happier times He's standing at the phone waiting When you call him at 516-458-2741 Tell him you heard about him on the Take Your Life Back Today show with me, Ralph Friedrichs If you're watching this video and it's a little blurry. It's not the video quality. It's your glasses. And maybe it's time for a new pair of glasses. Go to www.globaleyeglasses.com. Let them focus on saving you money. Let them focus on giving you a new pair of glasses. The great thing is that you don't even need to leave your home. What you need to do is go to www.globaleyeglasses.com. Then you're going to pick out uh, whether uh, whichever frame you want. There's over 1,200. You can pick out a plastic, a metal, uh, a rimless, a full frame. Then you're going to type in your prescription. Then you're going to pick the type of lens you want. Do you want distance, reading, progressives, which is a no line bifocal or a line bifocal? Then you're going to pick out are they going to be clear? Are they going to tra change in the sun called transitions or photochromatics? Or do you want them to be dark all the time, polarized or tinted? Then you're going to put in your personal information like your mailing address and your phone number. And just double check everything to the left. And then you're going to just pay for them. And within 12 to 15 business days, excluding weekends and holidays, you'll just go to your mailbox, remove it from your mailbox, those glasses, put them on and see my videos so much better. Folks, www.globaleyeglasses.com. Let them focus on saving you money. Today's topic, uh, I spoke about um, doing this one today, Monday. Today is the 4th of January, 2016. And I had promised I would do this today on Monday. And these are seven tips that would help you or help your child behaving from behaving uh, badly. And uh, a lot of us go through this with our children. And it's, it's not even a matter of do we, do we need to discipline them. It's a matter of uh, what are some shortcuts, some tips on helping them from behaving badly. Are you worried about your child's behaviors in the public? 
Are you tired of hearing negative comments about your child's behaviors from family, friends, and teachers? Does your stomach sink and, and you feel totally embarrassed when your child starts to act out in the public, like at a, at a store, at Walmart or something? It seems rather crazy that restaurants, airlines, public spaces would restrict children. Isn't that how children spaces would restrict children? Isn't that how practice learning social expectation and rules are supposed to be by them being in public places? Here's the thing. There may be something going on in your child that warrants additional support from someone. Your child may have anxiety, explosive anger, or mood disorder, or he or she may be uh, uh, bothered by something else. It could be maybe you're having troubles with your husband, your wife. Uh, it could be a bully at school. Here are seven tips to help your child manage their out of control behaviors. And I want to point out, this is going to be number one, and you are the parent and your child is looking for you to set rules and boundaries of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. You need to set those. As a parent, it's your job to provide feedback to your, to help your child become aware of their behaviors and to offer your child support to help them connect and modify their behaviors. Children learn from your actions and your behaviors. So set crystal clear on what's okay behavior and what is not. And remember, children look at you as their role model, their hero. So you need to uh, lead by example. Number two is acknowledge their feelings. Often children are acting out because they are upset, bored, annoyed, nervous, mad, sad, excited, hungry, tired, among other feelings, needs, and wants. By identifying your child's feelings and their behaviors, your child will become more aware of their own feelings, behaviors, and their wants. Number three is let your child know when they are acting inappropriately. And I'm not saying let them know physically. I'm letting... I'm saying verbally you need to set the boundaries when you notice a negative behavior it's time to step in and let your child know what is expected of him or her be clear direct assertive without becoming angry and aggressive for example the sofa is not jumping um, this the sofa is not for jumping so don't jump please stop if they continue doing it you need to be more assertive and more direct Number four is allow your child to self-correct. If it's not a safety issue, give your child an opportunity to hear what you have requested. You may need to step closer, look into their eyes, put a hand on their shoulder or meet them at eye level and state what you want them to do. Then give them a few seconds to process the thought and what is being requested so they can work on it. Number five. If your child continues to act and disregard your request, it is time to step into your parenting authority like a sheriff. In a calm manner, let your child know what the consequences of the behaviors will be if they do not stop. Do this as calmly as possible. Recent studies in the brain-based research suggest we mirror the emotional responses of those that we are connecting with unconditionally or I should say unconsciously and at times consciously children want you to be upset as they are they want to pull you into their little world by staying calm and in your parenting authority you unplug power struggles and help your child regulate their feelings and behaviors by getting upset you feel their emotional outbursts even further you play into their card <laughs> Number six is consequences need to be immediate and meaningful, and you need to follow through. You cannot say you're going to be punished, but in two hours from now. Here's the tricky part for most parents. They become so upset at their child's behaviors that they make a threat that is unrealistic, like taking away the TV for a month. Then when parents are calm, they realize it may be difficult to monitor the consequences, and they decide to lessen the consequences or never follow through with the original threat. Children are very aware and learn by your behaviors. When you do not follow through on consequences, they realize that your consequences are not to be taken seriously and they disregard your request of whatever you might have asked them to do or not to do. 
Number seven, if your child needs more support in helping them to change their behaviors, then you can help by developing a positive reward system for younger children and behavior contract for teens and teenagers. Folks, the reward system always works. It works best. I have witnessed children make dramatic transformations in their behaviors with these strategies. And I've been uh, I've seen these strategies also flop and not work. What makes these behaviors agreements work is that when parents and children both are invested and their goals are realistic and achievable. I recommend these seven steps to the families, work with them and support them to create their own individualized uh, strategies to best support their child to be back in control of their own behaviors. If you are concerned about your child's behaviors by these strategies, if your child continues to struggle, seek other support, counseling, therapist, psychologist. If you're worried about your child's behaviors in the public or, and you're tired of hearing negative comments from your child about your child's behavior from family, friends, and teachers, and if your stomach sinks, and if you feel totally embarrassed when your starts to act, act when your child starts to act, act out in public, then you need to listen to these seven steps one more time. You are parent. You are the parent, and your child is looking for you to set the rules and boundaries, and uh, you need to let them know what is acceptable and un unacceptable behavior. And those rules and those boundaries are not to be bent, and they're not to be pushed aside. If you threaten. When I say threaten, I don't mean threaten in a physical sense. When you threaten with a certain punishment, make sure it's a realistic punishment and make sure it's an achievable punishment. Don't threaten to take the TV away from a month when you realistically know you cannot do that. What you can say is that you're going to possibly take their uh, cell phone away or their, um, their notepad. Those are things you can literally carry. You also need to acknowledge their feelings. Often children are acting out because they are upset, bored, annoyed, nervous, mad, excited, hungry, tired, um, and uh, there are other feelings among them um, and wants. By identifying your child's feelings and their behaviors, your child will become more aware of their own feeling, behaviors, and wants. You also need to let your child know that when they're acting inappropriately, it is not acceptable. When you notice the negative behaviors, it's time to step in and let your child know what is expected of him or her. Be clear, direct, assertive, without becoming angry and aggressive. For example, this sofa is not made for jumping. Please stop. Number four is to allow your child to self-correct. If it is not a safety issue, give your child an opportunity to hear what you have requested and let it sink in. You may need to step closer, look into their eyes, put a hand on their shoulder, or meet them eye level and state what you have said and you want them to do. Then give them a few seconds to process it again and hopefully it'll set in. Number five, if your child continues to act and disregard your request, it is time to step into your parenting role. In a calm manner, let your child know what the consequence of their behaviors will be if they do not stop immediately. Do this calmly as possible. Don't threaten them. Don't physically uh, hit them. Recent studies in brain-based research suggest that we mirror emotional response of those we are connecting with. In other words, if I'm going to act mad and aggressive towards you, you are going to respond in the same manner. Unconsciously and at times consciously, children want you to be upset as they are. By staying calm and your parenting authority, you unplug power struggles and you help your child regulate their feelings and behaviors. Number six is consequences need to be immediate and meaningful and you need to follow through with them. Here's the tricky part for most parents. They become so upset with their child's behavior they make a threat that is unrealistic like taking the TV away for a month. You know you can't carry that TV away for a month. Set the boundaries, I mean set the goals or the punishments a little lower with something that you can physically do. Take their cell phones, the notepads, telephones. Number seven, if your child needs more support in helping them to change their behaviors, then you can help by developing a positive reward system for younger children and a behavior contract for teens and teen, um, for young teens and regular teenagers. Um, I have witnessed children make dramatic transformations in their behaviors with these strategies, and I've seen strategies also flop. What makes these behavior agreements work is when the parents and children are both invested and the goals are realistic 
and achievable. I recommend these seven tips to the families, work with them and support them to create their own individual strategies to the best support their child to get back in control of their behaviors. If you are concerned about your child's behaviors, try these strategies and if they don't work, you might need to go a little deeper into the problem and maybe go and get additional support. Good support uh, outlets would be um, counselors, uh, possibly some psychologists or psychiatry. We don't know exactly, but you got to remember now, your children look at you as the role model, the hero. And how they act out a lot has a lot to do with what goes on in the home. So if you're uh, verbally, physically um, abusing your spouse uh, or uh, verbally more than they're physically, because I would hope there are people out there that don't physically abuse anyone. But if you're verbally arguing with your husband and your wife each and every day, your children are going to rebel because they see you doing it and they think it's okay. If you and your husband, you and your wife, or whoever, your partner, need to argue, take it outside, away from the children. That, that's applied for hundreds of years, never to argue in front of the children. It's not a hard concept to go by. I know we all have anger at times, and we lash out. But pull yourself back and think about what these children are seeing, because you're saying it's okay to do it. Remember, if you act positive in front of your children, your children are going to act positive. But if you're going to act negative, that's exactly what you're going to get. As much as I always tell everyone, if you're going to smoke in front of your children, you're saying it's okay to smoke. If you're going to drink in front of your children, you're saying it's okay to drink. If you're going to um, uh, use profanity, they're going to think it's okay. Start today making changes. Start today by a new you so you can get children that are more secure at home. Lead by example. Show them that you are supposed to be the role model what they see is what they're going to do is the monkey see monkey do uh, attitude remember all positive things in your life will give you positive results if you keep the negativity away and out of your life that will be the best for you not only for your relationship with your husband your wife or your partner but for your children make your household a household of sanctuary almost like a home base uh, do you remember that game where everybody would run to home base and it felt like a safe zone? Let your children feel when they are at home, it is a safe zone. That no matter what, that husband, wife, partner, children can all sit at a dinner table at least two to three times a week and talk about their problems. Don't let the problems build up in your children or in yourselves. Remember, a sober today promises a better tomorrow. Think positive and you'll have positive results. And always remember, never ever say, what could be fixed today will wait till tomorrow because we are not all guaranteed a tomorrow. Some of us that might be watching will not be here tomorrow. That's never determined by anyone other than God. When we were born, God already knew the day we would die. So treat every day as it is your last day on earth because my friends, one day it will be. I hope to God, no matter where you watch me, you have the best day in your life, but I hope and I always pray that you all have a sober rest of your life and enjoy the beginning of this new year, 2016, and let this be the year for changes for all of us concerned. And may God bless you.